Hi guys, this is Yuji from Osakana in Brooklyn. This is episode 7 Osakana Fish School. Today's topic is about what is umami? I thought that it is important to talk about what umami is in this episode because I mention umami a lot in my different episodes. Umami is commonly used for Japanese cuisine in uh, general. However, it is not only related to Japanese cuisine. It happened to be a Japanese scient who discovered what umami was. So let's see what that umami is. A lot of people uh, think that umami is deliciousness, savory flavor. Uh, there are a lot of different words for uh, what the umami is. But uh, I'm gonna just make it very simple. Umami is amino acid that is found in ingredients. Yes, so umami is in every ingredient. And it's, what's very important is uh, to understand what umami acid is in what ingredients. There are two major umami acid. The first one is glutamic acid. And the second one is inosinic acid. Ingredients that are high in glutamic acid. The first example is kombu siwi. This is a dry kelp. And then the second uh, example is green tea. And also siwi. They look all different, but they actually share the same umami acid, which is glutamic acid. Also chicken is also high in glutamic acid. This is bonito flake. So bonito flake is high in inosinic acid. Other type of fish, tuna, salmon, are high in inosinic acid. Pork and beef are same as uh, fish. They are high in inosinic acid. Important thing about understanding umami acid is that uh, umami acid is uh, saturated and uh, enhanced by uh, taking the moisture out. That's why a lot of the umami high ingredients are dry products, such as the kelp, bonito flake, uh, nori seaweed, and also the, even tea. What American people have been doing uh, for umami is dry aged beef. Dry aged beef is a great example of umami enhancement. Dry aged beef room is usually temperature control and then the humidity control so that the moisture is uh, always out of the beef and then the beef are keep sort of like shrinking and then concentrating the uh, umami flavor by uh, without being spoiled because the room itself is humidity controlled. If the room is not humidity controlled and then the moisture is a lot in the room, the beef actually spoils. But by controlling uh, the moisture level of a uh, dry aged beef room, uh, the inosinic acid of the beef will keep being concentrated. That's why dry aged beef has higher umami than the regular beef. The fish aging that we do here is the same. So, which is called the himono, which I'll talk about in a different episode. But himono is the same way as dry aged beef. We cure the fish and dry it so that the uh, umami keep concentrating and then the uh, moisture goes out. So the dry aged beef and then the himono, dry aged uh, fish, are the same way of enhancing uh, inosinic acid. So I want to show you a fun project that we do here. This is our uh, toro. And then 
and this is Toro Shudo. So I uh, cure the Toro and then uh, we dry age it for two or three weeks. So Toro Shudo is a much higher umami than the Toro because this has been uh, salt cured and aged for weeks. And then uh, inosinic acid in the Toro is much much more uh, enhanced and intense. What do you think this is? This is called the Karasumi, a uh, dry aged fish roll. Uh, this is the same thing as dry aging fish. Uh, we salt cure the roll of the mullet and we dry age it. It's a very common uh, fish aging uh, technique in Asia, uh, Karasumi. Umami also has a lot to do with how to make broth, such as dashi. And I'm gonna talk about it in the next episode dashi making which also leads to miso soup making and also ramen broth making I also created a website yujiramen.com where you can buy all kinds of the ingredients and tools that I've been using for this episode and if you have a difficulties finding those ingredients please visit my website yujiramen.com if you have any other questions about uh, fish in general please send it to me osakanabk at gmail.com osakanafishschool I'd like to create a video together with you any question is welcome thank you so much